All right, we're back onto the car, putting the steering rack back in. Uh, I'm not going to show every single detail uh, as I showed them uh, when I took it out, so it's just reverse of that, but I'll give you a couple of tips. Uh, one, when you put the brackets back together, I replaced the rubber boots. Uh, mine were all um, dry rotted anyway, so I replaced those. Uh, two, the steering boots I replaced, and three, uh, these are the ball joint nuts. Um, and then uh, you see a lot of people, a lot of documentation actually says to replace uh, these bolts. These are not re non-replaceable, so you don't have to replace them. You just got to torque them into the right specs. Uh, I did call, um, I called Pelican and actually went to order some and they said, well, why? Uh, the service manual says don't replace them. So um, I am not replacing these. So that's what I got. All right, to get this in, uh, you have to clear these steering lines over that, uh, let me see if I can just zoom, uh, these steering lines over this bracket. Um, in order to do that, push this shaft all the way to the left or the passenger side of the car. Um, and then all you do is kind of hook it up there, all right? Um, and then I'm going to pivot it in place and push this in through, through, uh, through here, push on the other side so it goes up into the slot there. I'll show you. All right, take it out, try one more time. Make sure you put the steering boots on this time. Uh, don't, don't be an idiot like me. All right, the rack's in place, I bolted it up. All right, this is what it looks like mostly back together. I haven't torqued it down yet. Uh, you can see up there two banjo bolts. I still have to tighten them down. Uh, there's a crush washer on either side um, of the steering line. So make sure, I see one there. And one on the back for both of them. Make sure you do that. Uh, what else? Um, you might have to fiddle around a little bit with this, this crossbar as it holds it in place. Just uh, with the new rubber boots, it's kind of a pain. Um, or the new, uh, whatever this is, that rubber boot. Well, the first part of the steering rack is back in. Uh, don't forget the... Banjo bolts, as I mentioned, and there is a 10 mil nut right here that holds the uh, the um, steering line bracket on over there. Um, and then I torque these down to 33 foot pounds. Now this is absolutely some redneck shit right here. Uh, in order to get this steering boot on, I had to make these stupid ass clips out of an old coat hanger, which is hilarious because we got rid of most of these coat hangers but it's uh, just something that allows me to hook in and grab and pull. Now, I can't take credit for these. I read it on, I think, Renlist, um, and I was able to pull it all the way up. Uh, this is, I was trying to fight whether this or that stupid spring clip on the end of the steering rack, which sucked more. Um, this one sucks pretty hard. It's probably part of the worst job of this entire thing, so... Um, this alone would make me consider never doing this again. So, uh, yeah, this is fun. That's what these things look like. They're just literally bent over, uh, wide enough to get your hand in to hook it and pull it out. So it'll go around cause these are pretty tight and loop them up a little. They'll fit in nicer. Here's a quick close up of that bent up coat hanger we made. Um, the ends are just folded over and curved in. So not to rip the boots. All right, so I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I didn't wanna to have to deal with alignment issues. Um, so two things you can do to avoid alignment issues. One, put the correct tie rod back on, don't mess with those nuts right there. Uh, and two, uh, you want the steering wheel to still be straight when your uh, car is going down the road, you don't want it all crooked. So I lost that index, um, and I don't remember why, it's something I took apart. Um, but I believe what I see here is, so this nut, all right. So if you look up in there, I think I mentioned this was on the, on the bench, you can see there's nothing there, right? But if I actually pull, reach out and, and pull on the wheel hub, I can move that and you see it actually now indexed to a dot. Can you see the dot there? Uh, let's see right there. See how that dot moved into place? So I'm gonna center it in that hole and I'm gonna suspect that that means both wheels are straight. Uh, meaning that if I index the steering wheel spline to match this, the steering wheel should be straight and the car should run straight. So 
Um, that's what my guess is. So I'm going to give it a try and let you know. All right. So we're in the car. The, uh, the only thing that we did here is I needed a second person. Um, I set the steering wheel. <laughs> I set it nice and straight. It's not straight now, but it's already connected. So, um, all I did was I set, I had somebody sit in the passenger seat, hold the steering wheel straight. And, um, because I had the steering rack, um, aligned to that dot I showed you before, I just slid the, uh, the shaft down on and put the 10 mil nut back on. And, um, she looks nice and straight. So we'll, we'll take it for a spin. And, um, I think, um, you know, fingers crossed. I think I got it working. All right. The last step, I think the last step for this, uh, power steering rebuild, look how pretty this is. Um, is uh filling up the power steering reservoir and then bleeding the system so um in the early version 993 so this is a 97 shit what years is this? this is a 97 um there's actually a clear uh, power steering river reservoir in the 96 and later i think there's actually a, a solid one with a dipstick in it so it's in the back corner right there uh so the way you do it is uh fill it and then uh Fill it as much as you think you need to. Uh, turn the car over, and as soon as it starts, turn it off right away. Um, that'll drop. The, the fluid level will drop. And continue to do that until it stops dropping. Once it has no longer dropped, um, leave the car at idle and turn the steering wheel from lock to lock. All the way left, all the way right, not with excessive pressure. Um, and then uh, you want to do that a bunch of times until you have uh, no more bubbles or anything coming out of the system. And your system should be bled. And the job is done. And I guess that's it. All right, it took four stops, or starts and stops, um, in order to bleed the system. So a completely empty system. Um, one of these jugs, and it had, I don't know what these are, milliliters maybe? Um, shit, I have no idea. Well, that's about how much is left. So if you get it from Pelican Parts, that's how much you'll have left when you're done if you do one. So you don't need two jugs. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Bearded Garage, rebuilding the uh, power steering rack on a uh, Porsche 993. Um, I wouldn't say this is the easiest job I've ever done. It's, it's also not the hardest. It's uh, one of the first jobs in a while, though. I have run into multiple problems that uh, made me go, I don't know if I should have got into this. Um, and that happened probably three different times. So if you're a little hesitant, um, you know, give me a call, uh, send me a message. I can give you a hand on it or, uh, or let me know. Maybe I'll rebuild it for you. All right. Um, I couldn't have done this without uh, KLA Industries. They make a rebuild kit for this power steering rack. So I talked to Preston over there uh, at least once. He's actually going to share this video too for anybody that wants to rebuild it in the future. So um, I guess thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay subscribed. I'll make a couple more videos as, uh, as we continue with these cars. All right. Thanks.